The Glorious Church is a reflection of God's beauty, character and nature. The Glorious Church is God's workmanship, created for good works, light for a dark world and salt for the earth. The Glorious Church must be pure and impactful, for it is the only institution mandated to bring life and hope to the nations. Plug in to the annual theme of the Church of Pentacles for 2020, a glorious church to possess the nations. Come, let us drink deep from the word through which we are being cleansed and washed to become a radiant church. Welcome to Pentacles R, God's timely word for our dying world.
Many thanks to the Almighty God for this opportunity once again. We have been looking at the victorious Christian life. We are saying that the victorious Christian life is led by with the understanding of knowing who he is in your life, who Jesus is in your life. Who Jesus is in your life. And by the introduction of the, the Son of God into your life, who you have become. This understanding will make you a strong and a good Christian. Now, last week we were looking at the fact that. Um, uh, we, when we gather together, we need to call for worship. And we read Psalm 95. Psalm 95 encouraged us to worship the Lord. Yet it still brought some caution. Because of what has happened before. The Bible says these things are written for our own good. That we will not repeat the mistakes of old. Now Psalm 95 is also written. Because worship is to access life. Not death. Worship is to access life. Not death. So today I will begin talking about the fact that worship is to access life. See, so worship, whether at the personal level or at the corporate level, is to receive life. It's a means of life. It's to access the life of God. To be born again can be described as to turn or to return back to God. Repentance from dead works and faith towards God. That is how the Hebrew writer described it. Said the Hebrew form manatrial no a agen sacra a free now repentance from dead works and faith towards God. If God, if God is a source of life, then faith towards God simply means that you are going to access life. So the new creation has turned towards God. The one who gives life. And has life. It is directly opposite what happened in the Garden of Eden. So scripture says in Genesis chapter 3. Now from verse 22. Genesis 3 from 22. And the Lord God said. The man has now become like one of us. Knowing good and evil. He must not be allowed to reach out his hand and take also from the tree of life and eat. And live forever. So the Lord banished him from the Garden of Eden. Now this word Eden means delight. Now the garden of delight. It was a very pleasurous place. So the Lord God banished him from the garden of Eden. To work the ground from which 
he has been taken. After he drove the man out, he placed on the east side of the Garden of Eden cherubim and a flaming sword flashing back and forth to guard the way to the tree of life. Ena odi kerebim ni ojaframa afina edi ehim besi edin tronu enim epuefem se wamwe okwanya ediko enkwedu ya nuhono. Now this is to prevent man from coming to that tree. Now we nu na ebesi onipa kwanya wentu mi amadu ya nuhono. You see, Adam and the wife Adam left the garden of delight. And in fact, they left the presence of God. They left the garden of Eden. That was not enough. They also left the presence of God. But you see, Psalm 16 verse 11 says that. See, in thy presence, there is fullness of joy. At thy right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. In your presence, see, when we were born again, we haven't been taken to a certain garden. We have come to the presence of the Almighty God. There is fullness, joy. And at his right hand, there is delight. It is more than the Garden of Eden. The Bible says, pleasures forevermore. Not pleasures for a season. It's a very good church. That is a spirit-led church. When Sunday is over, you wish that Sunday, the, the next day is Sunday. Because in the presence of God, there is fullness of joy. At his right hand, the right hand is a place of authority, a place of power. Where God pulls strings, and demons are cast out. Healings take place. People see the mystic, the unexplainable. People see the transformation. The Bible says at his right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. You can't compare anything out there to that one. In the presence of God, we have come back to his presence. There is fullness of joy. There is so much excitement. Emotions of great delight. And happiness. Enjoyment and satisfaction. We enjoy the pleasure of his company. We are back to God. Back in his presence. Through the new birth. Brothers and sisters, we are back in his presence. You see, when we go to heaven, in the city, Scripture says that there will be a symbol of the tree of life. I'm sure when we pass by that tree, you say, this is the tree. But see, we have come to him. Not a tree. We have come to him. Not a tree. Scripture says this. The God who made the world and everything in it is the Lord of heaven and earth and does not live in temples built by human hands. Verse 25 of Acts 17 says this. And he is not saved by human hands. So if you go to church and you give offering you see, the Bible says, as if he needed anything. Rather, he himself gives everyone life and breath and everything. He is the author of life. He himself gives every man life and everything. See, 28 says this. For in him we live. We move and have our being. As some of you 
As some of your own poets have said, we are God's offspring. Why am I saying that in worship we access life? Now you have to understand that when I talk about worship now, I mean whatever we do. In response to God. Whatever we do. In response to God. That is what I mean by worship. That is what I mean by worship. Whatever we do. In response to our God. Whether through prayer. Through Bible study, say yeah, Bible by adoration, say yeah, oh, sorry, yeah. whatever we are doing, in response to God, ah, yeah, the man, yeah, in obedience to God, say, oh, city, yeah, we are accessing life. Yeah, 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 and qua. We are accessing life. Yeah, yeah, and qua. See what 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 we are trying to say is this. Now the epistle here can say in worship, well, oh, sorry, yeah, we are either reaching out to to Him. So when we are reaching out to him, we could be doing so through adoration. When we are reaching out to him, we could be doing so through normal prayer. When we are reaching out to him, we could be doing so through Bible study. And when we are responding to him, you know, uh, qua. we do so through obedience. Yeah, nam, oh, city, so, in any way, we are no. accessing life. Yeah, yeah, in, yeah, in, when we are going to him, we are going to life. We are going to stretch forth his hands, we are obeying, we yeah, are yeah, receiving life. Yeah, yeah, in, Worship is accessing life. Oh, sorry, I say, in, accessing life. Say, in, Why am I saying this? this make us, uh, see, in worship, we connect to the source of life. In worship, we connect to the source of life. We abide in him. The song says that abide, abide with me. Fast falls the evening tide. The Darkness deep is Lord with me. Change and decay is all around I see. In Sakrayani Proya Nature and Hush Yamanitu. In this very life. What's that in Abrabo? It's all about change and decay. And in Alpha in Sakrayani Proya. Nothing grows better under the sun. Bibia and Koye and we say, Oh, thou who change it not. And also, why won't Sakrada abide with me? One name and sinner. And then when we connect to him, it is a Yadia who batana. We are connecting to the one who does not change. Now Yadia who batadia on Sakrada. If we abide with him, we will not spoil. We will not decay. Because he will give us life. If we say Obama Yankwa, he will give us life. Obama Yankwa. John chapter 15 from verse 1. I am the true vine. And my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. Why every branch that does bear fruit he prunes? So that it will be even more fruitful. Verse 1 says that I am the true vine and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. While every branch that does bear fruit he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. So in that garden there is only one tree. All of us are the branches. Any branch that does not connect to the tree will certainly have no life. 
Because a branch of a tree has not got life in itself. If it has to leave, it must connect to the vine. Verse 3 says this. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit. By itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I'm the vine. You are the branches. I am the one vine. All of us. Yeah, yeah, We are yeah, yeah. branches. Yeah, yeah. mine. If. And that is condition. If you remain in me. And I in you. You will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. See, this does not mean you can do nothing. It means you can do something, but before him, it's nothing. People are doing, are doing so many things without him. But before him, it is nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and with this. If you don't remain in me, if you don't connect, say you are like a branch that is thrown away and with this. Such branches are picked up thrown into fire. Then, I pray that it doesn't happen to us. But what I want us to know is that in worship, we connect to life. We connect to the source of life. It is our life. And without him, we will wither. We will wither. We will wither. The Bible says, in him is life. And that life is the light of all of us. The first man, Adam, became a living being. The last Adam, that is Christ. The Bible says, he is a life-giving spirit. Once you connect him, to him. He is the life-giving spirit. Without him, he can do nothing. We are not sufficient in our own. See, our sufficiency comes from him. Our means of survival is our connectedness to him. That is our means of survival. I hope you have understood that. The blessed is the one who does not walk in the steps of the wicked or stand in the way that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers but whose delight is in the law of the Lord and who meditates on his Lord day and night. Now the Bible says this. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water. See, the worst thing that can happen to you when you are connected to the source is that you will yield your fruit in season. And he said, Oh, butter and cranny fire by one. You bet me a two one and say, Oh, but so about our womb. Your leaves will not be there. Now, what have I? Whatever you do, you will prosper. I'm saying that when you connect to the source, the worst that can happen to you is to produce fruit in season. And your leaves will not wither. Whatever you do, you will prosper. Don't just wake up and say that I'm a Christian and leave the source. Because in you and your Yourself, you don't have any strength. If he said, Well, one cast a woman, any one cast a woman, you have one in Abide with me. One may enter. Pass for the evening time. Bra, Emery, a chimney. Number two. They're tossing In worship, well, or sorry, we participate in the divine nature. Yeah, the Yahoo Ephra or Yamisumu. In worship, well, or sorry, we, young human beings, Nipama, mortals, 
we participate in God's divine nature. I want us to go to Ephesians chapter 4. From verse 22. Now let's remember that this scripture was written to the church. People who are born again like us. I want you to join me with this understanding. You were taught with regards to your former way of life. And they say, I want you to join me with to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by the deceitful desire. See, your old self, put off your old self. You are born again, but there is an old nature, old self, which corrupts. It is deceitful. It has desires, but it corrupts. But it corrupts. It is with you. That is what we said some time ago that you need to crucify that. So remember that you are a Christian, but that old nature can corrupt you. So say that to be made new in the attitude of your mind. And to put on the new self. Created to be like God. I like this one. <laughs> says that the new self. It's created to be like God. In true righteousness and holiness. Therefore, each of you must put off falsehood and speak the truth to your neighbor so that you can be a Christian who still tells lies because of the presence of the old nature that corrupts. If it wasn't so, there was no need to say this to the Christians. Now, in your anger, do not sin. So don't be practicing anger. You can move on to sin. Even though you are a Christian. Verse 28. Anyone who has been stealing must steal no longer. It's not surprising that you can, you can, you can find a Christian thief. Christian <laughs> thief. Born again thief. And then verse 29. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth. Sometimes people can just be insulting and saying things that are that filthy and profane, but they are Christians. Be, 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 to me, ye young do not grieve the Holy Spirit. Get rid of bitterness, rage, anger, brawling, slander, and all that. But let's come back to the fact that there's a presence of the old man in you that can really corrupt you. How do we solve this? How do we prevent ourselves from being corrupted? Now Peter admonishes. Second Peter 1 verse 3 and 4. His divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and grace. Called us by his own glory and goodness. Now, let's pay attention to verse 4. Through these, these, he has given us his very great and precious promises. So that through the word, you may participate in the divine nature. 
se mwenya edwane akono mu proya ewo wiase mu a mafa yenum so enya onyakopon so ni bi having escaped the corruption in the world caused by evil desires Bra. caused by the sinful nature bra mwenya adwene akono mu proya a ewo wiase a mo firi mu yi what is trying to say is that when you participate in the divine nature na the upper church says say wo de wo fra nya me so nu you escape the corruption wo be fi proya nu you will not be corrupted Want to mean say? And then he said, "This corruption is in the world." And okay, say stop praying. What we are seeing, the only way to escape it. Now, a quiet be first way journey free. Mu is for the mortal man to participate in immortality. And he said, "Nipa, oh no, no, I didn't hold back from on your mere own In this case, you exchange your strength, your weakness, with the strength of God. And to hear, you know what the Omra ye Emma ono na wajen in term and wajen. When you are doing that, it it becomes the opposite of Christ, who is God and took on humanity. But for us, we are humans, but we will be taking on God. Now, say what did you do, Jesus? Now, when you say Jesus, oh, you are me. Oh, be far, ni pa te biya. Now, yendi ya ye ni pa ye far o nyame te biya. Now, let's listen to Jesus in Luke 21. Now, mumba yenti e asema Jesus Christo kaya wo look and sempani te dunu ba kon. Verse 34 onwards. Look and sempani te dunu ba kon chemo di asanai aircron. Be careful. Now, mumba ye. Or your hearts will be weighed down. Na pucha if carous pucha drunkenness and in sabro and the anxieties of life any inquemu and who that and that they may close on you suddenly like a trap nehu ya ansha makuma so for it will come on all those who live on the face of the whole earth na ebeba wonga wote asasi na so now if you are living on the face of this earth then jesus is saying that this kind of hardship will come upon all of us, Christian or non-Christian. And he said, what he has I see is what? And the Jesus person said, say, so we are Christian, and now we are Christian. So that he said, but you may have a year in a so. Be always on the watch. And he said, and pray that you may be able to escape all that is about to happen. And that you may be able to stand before the Son of Man. When you, when you pray, when you participate in the divine nature, you escape the hardship that is to bring corruption. And you are able to stand before the sun. Number three, in worship, we build our spiritual muscles. Waiting upon God in prayer and being obedient to his commands builds our spiritual muscles. Don't you know, Isaiah says, this, have you not heard the Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired. Or weary. And his understanding, no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary. He gives strength to the weary. And increase the power of the weak. Even youth grow tired and weary. And young men stumble and fall. But those who wait. Upon the Lord. Now, when I watch here, I don't know. Who renewed their strength? Who be nyan who adem for fro? They will renew their strength. Who be nyan who adem for fro? They will exchange their strength for His strength. Who adem who adem be manu na wajeli die? They will soar on wings like eagles. Who adem taban kod e kod die betu? They will run and not grow weary. Now, who betu mika wamre? They will walk and not. Now, who be nanti a wam paba? In worship. Who asori emunu? We build our spiritual muscles. Yes, she yes apo munsu. We build our spiritual muscles. Matthew chapter 7. Matthew in Saint Panitin soon. From verse 24. Matthew in Saint Panitin soon. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and put them into practice hmm, is like a wise man who builds his house on the rock. The rain came down. Now, when it's raining, rains do not have ice. So they, don't, they don't select and pick. You see, they just fall on wherever they are supposed to fall. 
Sabi in so any any until on to me ye mu or to go as I see now so. The rain came down. Na usio kesi toy. And the streams rose. Na insio yiri. And the wind blew. Na inframa boy. And beat against the house. Na ebe bo abano. Yet it did not fall. Na anhiasi because. It had its foundation on the rock. If we say we are not saying that because we are Christian. Yeah, can say we are Christian. But he says that the one who hears and mm-hmm. obeys. Or say the or say in seminar or you know. The one who hears the word that is life. They are or say in quan seminar. Jesus said the word that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. Yes, we say in seminar make catch them. Aye, home home na yekwa. That word is coming to you. Na say san seminar ba onche. And you receive it. Na say woje. And you walk in it. Na wo nanti mu a. You are like someone whose house is built on the rock. What he say oni pa we see it down e wa botan so. The rains will come. In sio be ba. The storms will hit against the wall. Inframa e hu be tu a bo e dai no. But it will not be shaken. Na so e rain wo so because you have built your spiritual. If we say, what shall we hold in it? Verse 20 says there that, but everyone who hears this word, <inaudible> these words, <inaudible> of mine and does not put them into practice, <inaudible> it's like a foolish man <inaudible> who builds his house on the sun. <inaudible> the rain <inaudible> came down. <inaudible> the streams rolled. <inaudible> and the wind blew. <inaudible> and beat against that house. <inaudible> and it fell with a great crash. <inaudible> Let me say this. When you were Christian, know that you don't have you do not have strength in your own. One of the source of our strength is that when you stretch of that life, receive it. Otherwise, when the rain comes, when the storms roll, you see what will happen is this. It will test both houses. It will test both houses. Let's move on. In worship, as in obeying his word, it's a means of prosperity. In worship, as in obeying his word, it's a means of prosperity. A means of prosperity of the spirit, the prosperity of the soul, and the prosperity of the body. Total emancipation. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night. So that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous. Then you have good sources. There is life in his words. Can you imagine Joshua taking over from Moses? Now God doesn't have anything to say to him. Can you imagine him just pointing to the book of the law? This book of the Lord is full of life. Let it not depart from your mind. Meditate upon it. Let it fill your mind. Speak it. Be careful to obey it. That's all. And then you will be prosperous. You will have great success. This book of the law. Because there's so much life in the book of the law. But the words that comes out of his mouth, they are spirit and they are life. Sometimes because of hermeneutics, homiletics, and all that is, it's as if the Bible is some ancient story that needs so much interpretation. But you see, it is God who is still speaking. Respond to it. It is life. Anyway, when they are teaching homiletics, <laughs> yeah. so you can be a good interpreter. But God is speaking. This word is life. Receive it. And it will build you up. 
the same way as you participate in it as we worship the Bible said the spirit that raised Christ from the dead quickened your mortal body he sent forth his word and that word which is life he says that the word went to heal them and rescue people from their graves. Can you imagine that? That we have gone to church and the word of God is coming and then this word has eyes. The word is rescuing. Bringing people out of their graves. Wherever you are, maybe you are sick but listening to this one. In worship, we say that it's a means to prosperity. Even healing to your physical body. In worship, many great things happen. Whether you are before God alone or you are in church. Connected virtually or physically. The Bible says there, there is life forever. In Acts chapter 14, verse 8. Say so in Lystra there sat a man who was lame. He had been that way from birth and had never walked. He listened to Paul. <laughs> I like that part. He listened. Otie. He listened to Paul. Otie, Paulo. As he was speaking, life was coming out of his mouth. <laughs> coming out of his mouth. In worship, coming out of his mouth. He listened to Paul. Otie, Paul. As he was speaking, Paul looked directly at him. Paul also saw that he had faith to be healed because you could see from the man that the man is reaching out and receiving that life and he called out stand up on your feet maybe you are listening to me you may be sick but there is life coming to you in the name of Jesus stand up be healed in the name of Jesus respond to life and receive life forevermore. Let your ankles be strengthened. And I want you to stand up. Wherever you are, stand up. And be healed. And the infirmity be gone. In the name of Jesus. Any infirmity be gone. In the name of Jesus. Mm. In worship, there is life. We have gone to church. Just about the opening prayer. Ah, yeah, yeah. Then uh, I just come to church very early and I saw this nurse sitting just close by the, the, the doorway. She would go out and come in, go out and come in too frequently. Yeah. I was wondering why, why she was just going out and coming in. Nurse inibiti before we close it was testimony time then she came to stand there but you see this is my left ear does not hear this one I can hear yes. this particular one. And I'm a nurse. I know what I'm talking about. But today I came to church. I spent so much time praying the whole day. And I told myself that today I should have a miracle. So when the brother started with the opening prayer, she just heard some strange noise. Just pop. In the left ear. Then somehow, she was hearing. So, she will go out, close the right ear, 
And then try to find out whether this one is hearing. Then she will come back. And no, go, go, then she will go out. So so that was you. the reason she was going out and coming in. In, in his presence. There's life forevermore. There is so much life. We will get there in future. As I talk about worship. Especially when I come to corporate worship. We're praying in church. Then I went around laying hands on some people. And uh, when I touched this head of this lady, it was so hot that I just removed my hands. Then I asked her, what is wrong with you? Then she said, and how? Then she said, and now say she couldn't even talk. What? I felt the heat. Me me a show no. So I went back and I placed the hands there. At this time, I didn't mind the heat. Because I could see that she needs she needed life. Let me close. My mind didn't just go to her. Following which she came. Testimony time. I was sick last week. Now you came to me, Yari. I was admitted at the hospital. Why did me to a hospital? I am Sabia. I'm also a nurse. I'm also a nurse in The way I was feeling. Now they're not a year man. No. I knew that I couldn't leave. Not me. I'm set me to me to nurse. By the next day. I also realized that this was time for prayer. Now me who said Sabri so a year Bible prayer. I was sick. Not me, Yari. So I told a friend. That I'm going to pick something from home. Because if you t- if you said I've, I've discharged myself, I'm going out and I'll come by. So I'm, I'm a nurse. I'm going to pick something from. Home. Then she came straight to the place of prayer. So when we call for prayer, she came. When I touched her, the temperature was too high. After the prayers, she went back to the hospital. hospital only to go and take her attire and then uh, God is. He is in worship. He access life. It is a means of prosperity. In worship, there's grace. And there's mercy. The Bible says, come, come. Come, come. come, come. We have the high priest in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. In worship, we will find grace. We will find mercy. Even in time of need. We will continue next week. But we we'll still talk about the worship. If worship is to access life, why do others die in worship? We will look at that next week. God bless us all.
worship, as we worship, we are connecting to the source of life. As we worship, we are connecting to Him who does not change, who does not decay. Decay changes all around. But as we worship, we are praising through that decay, that change. Join us wherever you are as we worship the Lord. Yeah.
enter into the next session of our prayer. As Daddy was speaking, he says that in worship, as in obeying his word, it's a means of prosperity of the spirits of the soul and of the body. It is total emancipation. This is life. And we want to participate in this word tonight. You want to lay hold of this word that has come tonight. Just like the cripple as he heard the word of God being spoken and he listened. The Bible says that the man of God just spoke to him that up, arise on your feet. And he spoke because he was listening to the word. He participated in the life that was in the word. Said the Obubu of Fono Ete Asamna, Otia Samna, when you miss one for cancer, sorry, Otimiji Asamna, sorry, and Asania Bessie. Tonight, and you may ever that same spirit that worked in that crippled man. Sir, to me now, a year, Juma, I will be born. The spirit that raised Christ from the dead. Sahuna, a young Christopher is present in your room tonight. Baby, I will be a sound. That same spirit is present wherever you stand. Baby, I would never be answered too many years to blow in towns. It's participate in this way way. that any situation that has crippled us be may be a seed and come in the name of Jesus. Well, yes, Lift up your voice in prayer. 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 Everywhere he went, he was doing good. Hallelujah, the mighty healer. He heals the lepers. When the people saw him, they started walking. Everywhere he went, my Lord was doing good. Everywhere he went, everywhere he went, he was doing good. Hallelujah, the mighty healer. He Father and our God, we are so thankful and grateful for the opportunity to gather in your presence. We are thankful for the opportunity to connect into your life, to connect into this divine power that has given us that ability to escape the corruption that is in this world. As we have lifted up worship to you, we have received your life, that life that knows no death. That life that swallows sickness. That same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. As we have lifted up worship, that life has been imputed into our spirit. It has been imputed into our souls. It has been imputed into our bodies. So as, as we stand in your presence here, 
Lord, any sickness in our bodies, the sicknesses in the bodies of your people, the challenges that your people are going through as we have connected to your life. Sicknesses have given way as we have connected to your life. Anything that is decaying has left in the name of Jesus because all around us there is change, there is decay. But you are the one who does not change and that is the God we have connected into tonight. You are the one who does not decay and as we have worshipped, we have connected into you. So all that is happening around us, we shall go to and fro, but we shall not fall victims of it, including COVID. You have covered us with your blood. You have imputed us with your life. So we are moving out as people who are victors, as people who have the life of God and who are going out there to dispense this life wherever we trade. We give you praise, we give you glory that this life has affected our businesses, this life has affected our marriages, this life has affected our families, our works, even though this year COVID has come into it because of this life. You have a way of restoring. Because of this life, restoration is taking place because your life knows no decay. As we have worshipped in way as we have worshipped in this prayer, we have received your life and we are moving out as victors, people who are more than conquerors. We give you praise, we give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen.